Josai, Masters of Guerrilla Warfare, providing them with some of the more unique traits in all of Shogun 2. Hi, my name is Mr. Smartonkey and today we're going to be taking a look at the ins and outs of the Josai. Let us start with the Josai's clan traits. The Josai are named the Hidden Warriors, after their skill in Guerrilla Warfare. Their traits only reaffirm that name, starting with conditioning, giving all of the Josai's troops plus 2% movement speed in battles. Whilst 2% isn't much, it will surely help if you're using many traditional units and you're attempting to close the gap quickly. Subversion increases the casualties of sabotage and harassment actions by 10%, meaning you can weaken those enemy armies just a little bit before assaulting them with your army. Guerrilla Warfare allows you to recruit an additional 6 Yuguki Tai units, which brings the total to 10, but can be increased further to a maximum of 12 through the technology tree. I find this an interesting trait, since the Yuguki Tai are unique to the Josai, so why not just increase their limit by default? My guess is they made it a trait because they couldn't think of anything else yet they needed a fourth trait, since every clan in Fall of the Samurai gets four traits. Lastly, resourcefulness is arguably the most interesting trait across all clans. It allows your armies to replenish an enemy territory all year long except during winter, when you will take as much attrition as any other clans would. Also keep in mind that replenishment in enemy territory will never be as fast as it would be in your own. On to the campaign map. The Josai start in the province Kazusa, a town that starts off quite poor due to its meager soil, but does provide you with the iron resource, which will make you some money over the long run once you start trading. Besides the iron mine, you also have a port, and a traditional dojo already built. You won't have to worry about recruiting a ninja from it, because you start with one out in the field. Alongside your port, you start with a couple of ships already in the water, in range of the town to your north, which brings us to your neighbors. At the start of your campaign, you only have one immediate neighbor, the Koga and Shimosa to your north, whom you start war with. Shimosa is another fairly poor province with meager soil and a clay building. Sadly, clay isn't a resource and thus isn't as valuable as iron. Whilst the Koga are your only neighbor, it's worth talking about some of their neighbors since they will soon be yours. To Shimosa's west are the Edo and Musashi, whom you start allied with. Musashi is significant in that it is the Shogun's capital, and in order to win the campaign, it has to be held by you or someone you're allied with. While you do start allied to the Edo, they have a tendency to break that alliance in my experience. They did it three times in my legendary Josai campaign, although when offered a new alliance they took it without question every time. To the east in Itachi are the Mito. Hitachi is a great province to own as it can become very rich very fast. On top of its fertile soil, it also has a copper resource, one of the more valuable resources in Fall of the Samurai. Lastly it has a port, making it a perfect money maker. The final neighbor you will have are the Utsunomiya in Shumatsuke, another mostly invaluable province made valuable by its specialty building, this time the railroad which will make traveling across the map much easier later in the game. That covers all of your early game neighbors, but it also opens up the question of expansion. You obviously have but a single target on your first turn, the Koga. Despite the winter months, I suggest besieging it with all of your units immediately, and sending over any reinforcements once you've recruited them. I suggest besieging out the enemy rather than fighting the battle, but it's up to you. Don't worry about the attrition you take, as it will be far less than the men you would lose from actually fighting a siege. Especially since you're sending over more reinforcements while you're stopping them from recruiting anything, means you'll have a huge advantage either way once they sally out. Before any of this happens though, it is important to note that the Mito and Utsunomiya are not allied at the start of the campaign, but often end up forging an alliance in the first couple of turns. Because of this, I'd advise using your ninja to discover the Mito and declaring war on them on turn 1. This way you prevent them from teaming up and having to fight both at the same time once you do inevitably declare war on them. You won't want to go west as that would mean attacking the Edo, who are a shogunate clan and you'd just be making things harder on yourself. Plus they start allied to the Odawara, so you'd still end up attacking two clans at the same time. Not to speak of your loss of honor and diplomatic relations from betraying an ally. Lastly, I would recommend seriously considering scuppering your ships. Depending on the difficulty you're playing on, they might be a huge drain on your income and not worth their upkeep costs. If anything, scupper the more expensive ship and keep the gunboat for some exploration or naval bombardments. On lower difficulties, you could probably get away with keeping them, but you'll need all the money you can get on higher difficulties. The final thing to do on the campaign map is have a look at the Josai family tree, which is pretty bare bones. Your daimyo is a 19 year old Hayashi Tadakata, who has a single trait, Distrustful, which gives him a minus 2% chance of being assassinated. Your second general is Tadakata's 16 year old brother, Tarataka. Don't ask me, I didn't name them. Tarataka has no traits. Our next topic are the Josai specific units, which is going to be a short topic for most of the Fall of Samurai clans as many clans only have one or even zero unit specific or unique to them. The Josai is among those of just a single unit, the Yuga Gitai. Yuga Gitai are a skirmish infantry unit and does have the longest infantry range in the game. Their range of 150 is shared with only a handful of units, Bokachi, Sharpshooters and a Tosa unique unit, the Tosa Rifleman. 
Yuga Kitai can be seen as a direct upgrade of the sharpshooters, as all of their stats besides armor, range and ammunition are higher than those of the sharpshooters. There is one thing that sets the Yuga Kitai apart from their skirmish infantry burden though, and that is their Kishio training. They have the ability to deploy outside of the deployment zone and can move and even fire whilst remaining hidden, which makes them fit right in with the guerrilla theme the Jozai have. The Yuga Kitai are perfect for taking pot shots at the enemy, falling back, rinse and repeat to whittle down your enemies. The last topic I want to touch on is the army composition recommendation. This is once again a bit of a difficult topic for Fall of the Samurai Clans because of their lack in unit diversity. So what I will do is recommend an army that stays in line with the clan traits and theme. This won't necessarily be the most effective army you can build, but if I were to show you that, most of these Fall of the Samurai Clan overviews would see the same exact army in this topic, and that wouldn't be very helpful. Since the Jozai are a very heavy guerrilla based clan, with increased movement speed and the Yugi Tai unit that can hide anywhere, it makes sense to recruit a hit and run type army. When it comes to cavalry, Yariki and Boki are both excellent at such tactics, but since you already have the Yugikitai that fulfill a similar role to Boki, and you have no other anti-cavalry units, I'd recommend using Yariki. Later in the campaign you'll want to exchange those for the Shogunate Guard Cavalry for even more cavalry power. As your mainline infantry, the Shinzengumi Police Force filled the required role quite well. After losing a volley to thin out the enemy's ranks, you can charge them into melee, where they will win most fights. As your real skirmish infantry, you'd want to use Yukikitai as mentioned before. They are your unique unit in the backbone in this type of army. You could choose to field a couple of Kisho Ninja to really drive home the guerrilla warfare tactic, as they share the same traits as your Yugi Kitai do, being able to hide effectively and deploy outside of your deployment zone. Lastly, a unit that doesn't necessarily fit with this type of army, but one that's just incredibly useful either way, Armstrong Guns. Besides the fact that they are just absolutely devastating, they often also force the enemy to advance on you, which gives you even more opportunities to use your hit and run tactics. To reiterate, this isn't necessarily the most effective army you could recruit, but it's one that will be interesting to use from the Jozai perspective. That is going to do it for the Jozai clan overview. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, and I shall do my best to answer them. If you like these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also make sure to join my Discord channel if you just want to hang out and chat. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye!